Welcome to What Are You Sporting About podcast, a podcast about business, employment, sports, and entertainment to help educate, support, and guide you to your next level. Here's your host, attorney Savania DeBarros. Hello, everyone. I am Savannah, the protector of athletes and the founding and principal attorney of the S. Elder Bros. Law Firm, where we represent athletes, business owners, and employees. Our model for the law firm is that we want to help you protect and increase your bottom line by making sure your protection soars. Before we go into today's interview with the amazing Naya, <laughs> all right, uh, I want to give you guys a little background on this phenomenal athlete. Because uh, what I wanted to do was just bring in some major hitters for you guys this Black History Month so that you can be inspired and motivated to your next level. So let me give you a little background about who we're dealing with today. Miss Taper is an Olympian and professional women's rugby player for the USA's women's sevens team. Naya is originally from South Carolina, but raised in Charlotte. She attended college at the University of North Carolina, where she graduated in 2016 with a bachelor's degree in exercise and sports science and fluency in Spanish. Hmm, el español. espanol. <laughs> she began her rugby career playing for UNC in 2012. She began a professional career for the Eagles in January of 2016. And she had her debut in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Oh, I wonder. Do you follow Portuguese? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's so amazing. So she's been in, in Paulo, Brazil, where she scored her first try on her first touch of the ball. And she then went to win player of the final for 2017 in Sydney. She's made the dream team at the 2017 Sydney Sevens, 2017 Vegas Sevens, the 2018 San Fran World Cup, and 2021 Dubai Sevens. She also played on the 2017 Ireland World Cup team for 15s, where they placed fourth overall. And she holds the title of all-time leading try soccer for the women's Eagles sevens team. And she was the first ever USA women's rugby player to score 100 tries. And she was the first spot in the Sports Center top 10. And she participated in the 2021 Tokyo Olympics. She currently resides in Chula Vista, California, where she trains full time at the Olympic Training Center to prepare for the 2024 Paris Olympics, <laughs> while also focusing on building her brand and legacy. Welcome so much to the show. I'm so excited to have you. Thank you so much. And just for the listeners, <clears throat> sorry, it's Naya Tapper, just so everybody knows. Okay, let's get that right. <laughs> yeah. Naya Tapper, Naya Tapper. It's so great to have you. And first, I want to ask you, what are you sporting about? Uh, so for me, I am sporting about being a Black woman in a white man's sport. I'm sporting about financial um, security as a woman in the world. I'm sporting about inspiring people to follow their dreams and work hard for the things they love and the things that they believe in. And I'm sporting about accomplishing some of the biggest goals that you could dream of. I know that's right. So what are some of the biggest dreams that you are trying to accomplish? I mean, you already have accomplished many, but mm. uh, since you mentioned it, <laughs> go ahead and let us know. Uh, so for a long time, I wanted to go to the Olympics, be called an Olympian, and I was able to accomplish that goal in last uh, Ju July, which was mm -hmm. an amazing experience. Um, I wanted to be able to make history in my sport to where once I left, there would be some legacy of my name left in the sport for yes. a lifetime. And so I was able to do that a couple weeks ago in Spain, where I was the first USA women's rugby player to hit 100 tries, which is really cool. Um, I think my next couple of goals will be to make it to the Paris 2024 Olympics and also to make the Hall of Fame for the USA rugby team. I love it. So you are the second, but the first rugby athlete, female rugby athlete on this podcast. Oh. Um, and I know rugby is not necessarily an American sport, it's definitely mm -hmm. a European sport. So I'm curious to know 
what got you into rugby out of all things? So I was always a very active child growing up. I had a lot of energy. I was, I would say, pretty aggressive. And um, I was just one of those kids who was always outside, who was always playing football with the boys, making mud pies and things like that. So um, growing up, my brother was a very good football player. So watching him, I was like, oh, like, I want to play football too. Like, I want to be the first girl in the NFL. But as you get older, you you realize some things aren't as realistic as um, you think they are when you're younger. So I ended up just running track and field and did very well in that sport and enjoyed that sport. It was in a very, a very important um, part of my life, how I made some of my best friends and learned a lot of lessons that I take into life right now. Um, they had rugby at my high school, but because I was running track, and kind of really focused on that. I didn't take up the offer, but when I got to college and decided to just focus on academics and enjoying my social life, I ended up coming across rugby again and thought, you know, like this could be something fun. It'll allow me to stay active and it'll allow me to make friends. So I joined the rugby team for leisure, for something fun to do. And now it's crazily my profession and has allowed me to go to the Olympics. I think one of the things I loved about the sport was the team aspect, which um, I feel I didn't get much with track and field because even though they say it's a team sport, it feels a lot more individualized than rugby. So with rugby being a team sport and that being my first experience with a team sport, I learned a lot in terms of how to work with other people, how to depend on other people, how to um, deal with other people depending on you. Um, I've also learned the importance of trying to get better because now you as an individual athlete doesn't only affect, affect yourself, it affects the people around you. So always trying to get better, better for yourself, but also your teammates. And I also learned from rugby respect in a sport. Um, rugby, I think, is the only sport that hangs out with their competitors after they just tore each other to pieces, which I think is insane, but also incredible and shows you how amazing rugby people are, how amazing that rugby community is. They're very accepting for the most part, non-judgmental for the most part, in a safe space for a lot of people. Yeah. So mm. that's something that I heard before. And I, I said that is absolutely amazing because it shows a deep resilience of being able to categorize or mentalize issues mm -hmm. that not so many people may have the knack to do even in real life right yeah. just take business for example um or mixing certain relationships with business how many people can separate personal life from business life yeah. but with rugby you're able to separate the two do what you need to do to help your team to win but you're not enemies either once you leave the field. Yeah. 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 So I want to try and transition a little bit if I can over here um, to kind of figure out some downs to success for you. So this segment is basically called the four downs to success. It has this football element to it. And generally the question is about what are some of the things or pivotal points in your life that you can see as a down to that ultimate goal that you want to make or that you have made. And so sometimes that goal could have been your touchdown or you um, kicking a field goal to transition into that next phase of your life. Can you share a few things with us? Um, I think one of the things I experienced was being brought out to be a full-time professional rugby player, and then four months later being cut from the team mm -hmm. because I wasn't at the skill level that I needed to be. Um, physically, I was where I needed to be, if not better, but um, skill-wise, I wasn't where I needed to be. So I think that moment was a pivotal mo moment for me of, am I going to fight and work my way back into the sport, or am I just going to quit and go and do something else? And in that moment, thanks to the support of my parents, um, I decided to stick it out and 
um, go through that adversity. And I was able to come out onto the other side and have a very successful career so far since then. So I think that was an important learning moment for me in terms of complacency, not being complacent with just being good enough, always being open to finding ways to get better. I think another experience I remember um, being in Dubai and getting ready to go to the stadium for one of our tournaments and we were in the elevator with an older couple. And when the woman found out that us women played rugby, she just commented, oh, like we're not gonna be watching the girls, we'll just be watching the guys. So just like <clears throat> in that moment, there's two ways you can go. You know, you can be angry and take it out on them or you can take it at a, a learning moment moment and also an inspirational moment to hopefully show her, you know, women are fierce, they're strong, they're confident, and they can play a contact sport. Like we're not in the 1800s anymore. Like this new generation is on another level and we're breaking barriers. So in that moment, it put a fire in me to do the best that I could and become as great as I possibly can as a rugby player to show people who don't believe in us why they should believe in us. So that was another um, important moment for me. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, I think another one of the big things that I touched on a little bit before was learning how to work with other people, learning how to be on a team. Um, we train with about 20-ish 20, 20 girls every day that's a lot of different personalities. That's a lot of different attitudes. That's a lot of different um, people who grew up differently, were raised differently. Um, so being able to learn how to communicate differently based on how those people grew up and how they were communicated with has been something that I struggle with on a daily basis because of how I grew up and how I was coached in the past and how differently that is for me now. Um, learning how to talk to people properly. Some people like blunt conversations. Some people like conversations a little more sweeter and nicer. So just learning how to move around in a team environment to where I'm um, respectable, but also honest and also empathetic to other people. I think that lesson has been very important because as you said, that doesn't only apply to sports, it applies to life in general. It'll apply to um, my future job. It'll apply to when I have kids, when I have a husband, things like that. So um, that's been a really important lesson for me as well. Those are all great. I wanna ask you something about the coaching because you said recognizing, I can't remember exactly how you said, but recognizing how you were being coached previously mm -hmm versus your coaching <clears throat> in the present, that helps you to change. Is there anything from how you were previously coached, like back in your early days into the sport um, or that you didn't like, or were there just some key issues that you knew were not connecting with you as a person? So sometimes mm -hmm. like how teachers say, you you can teach a lesson to the class, but maybe a few people in the class will get it because everyone learns a different way. Yeah. And I think that's what that experience has been like for me because coming up in sports in middle school and high school, um, if you didn't, and, and I, if you didn't do something properly or if you didn't you weren't listening or being disobedient or whatever, or like not trying hard enough, you know, you got cussed out. Like you got told, honestly, you need to be doing this and you need to be doing this. It was blunt feedback. And because I, that was what was, I was always around that was normal for me. And um, coming into the college environment, coming into the professional environment, um, the coaching style was more empathetic. It was less direct. Um, it was nicer and I didn't learn well. And I didn't feel like I learned well in, in that type of environment because I felt like I was having to beg for honesty. I was having to beg for the bluntness that in the past I was getting almost immediately. So I think that's something that I've been trying to learn as I go is 
how can I take what coaching style they have, but how can I also express to them how I learn best? Yeah. And see if we can't change each other. Because the same way that I'm going about changing how I communicate, Mm -hmm. I can expect that from my coaching staff as well. Absolutely. Oh, that's really good. That's really good. Um, It makes me think, well, I wonder actually if there are issues connected with confidence in a way that are connected to with the learning style you had previously, because everything is so out on the table. So (laughs) previously with the bluntness, the complete openness, Mm -hmm. You don't have to guess about anything, but when someone else is different or they come from a different background, different culture or their family, you know, explain things in a different way to, I don't really want to say sugarcoat, but to soften the blow for someone who's so (laughs) used to the bluntness, because that's me. (laughs) That's Uh how I grew up. Yeah. Um, It can kind of make you think, okay, am I doing this right? Yeah. So did you experience any issues around confidence with that? And if so, Uh, were you able to overcome that? I think my confidence kind of overpowered Mm. everything or like what overpowered what I was trying to express to my coaching staff. It overpowered how I was trying to communicate what I needed. So because I was so confident in how I was coached in the past, because I was so confident in my physical and skillful abilities as time went on in my journey with rugby, getting better and better um, each day, um, that bluntness that I was exposed to is a part of me and is also how I communicate. So I demanded that from my coaching staff, which I think can be uncomfortable the same way that their coaching style was uncomfortable to me. So Mm -hmm. finding the balance of how to communicate that so that we both understand, but also making sure that I'm getting what I need. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I think so many times, especially as black women, we forget to, we forget to demand what we need. Mm -hmm. Um, instinctively we know intrinsically we know what we need yeah but when you feel like so much is on the line a lot of us fail to make that a center point in the conversation and so i I just want to applaud you for standing up and advocating for yourself even in that space although it it is uncomfortable because you have technically two completely different cultures clashing Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so with that clash is the way that we communicate, the way that we even perceive certain things. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it can make for a hectic situation, but it can also make a beautiful outcome if if both sides are willing to, in a sense, kind of agree to disagree, yeah. um, but in a very respectful, I, I get you type yeah. of situation. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. That's awesome. Um, Thank you. So I want to move a little forward. And I'm going to ask you to think quick on your feet. Is the fast boxing round. <laughs> so the fast boxing round is brought to you guys by the Athletes Making Moves. We have a new course that is launching March 21st, 2022, all for athletes, athletes in business or professionals helping athletes. If you want to find and reshape your identity, understand business and its building blocks, and began creating and implementing a legacy that you will love. I want you to join me March 21st, 2022 for the inaugural course of the Athletes Making Course. And come on, sign up, let's talk, let's get from underneath some of these things that are holding us back. And just to let you guys know, a portion of the proceeds are being donated to the Alzheimer's Association in the honor of my late grandmother, Glovine Smith. The 21st of March is actually her birthday. So this is a token and appreciation of her love an investment into my life. So here it is. And you got to think super, super quick on your feet. Okay. All right. So there's going to be four questions. Name one athlete in business you wish you knew personally. I would say Serena Williams. Oh, that's a good one. That's a really good one. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> That's a really good one. She is, you know, she's a powerful force to be reckoned with too. And I love the fact that she she knows her power and she stands in it so fiercely. Yeah. And don't allow anything to shake or move her. So that's mm-hmm. a really good one. I, I love that. All right. Next question. Name an athlete in your family and their sport besides yourself. Uh, my brother, his name is Mark Legree, but we call him Dre. He was a football player, as I talked about earlier. He was um, a history maker in his college at App State University and then went on to the NFL to play on a couple teams before going to play in the CFL and then now currently coaching um, for Georgia State. So shout That's out to awesome. him. Yeah. That's awesome. Shout out, bro. <laughs> okay. If you could do anything and not fail, what would it be? I would become a comedian. Really? Yeah. <laughs> 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 drop a line drop a line right now <laughs> i gotta save that for the future <laughs> i was not expecting that that is so awesome okay so we're gonna move a little bit forward um and we're almost at the end here but as you guys know i'm an attorney i've always wanted to be a lawyer and it's something that is so deep is deeply connected in my soul, the law is. And so part of what I wanna do in this world is help people to understand and see different ideas in the way that the law can help to support them. So this is called the legal round. And the legal round is brought to you guys by my firm, the S.L. DeBrowes Law Firm. So are you ready? Yeah. Okay. What is one thing <clears throat> just one thing (laughs) you love about the law one thing i love about the law is probably the rules i'm somebody who likes things set in stone so that's kind of very similar to the law this is what the rule is and that's what you have to follow almost kind of like a map a guidepost yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. all right what are three things you wish you'd known about the law uh i'm curious how you become a judge that's Hmm. something that um i've thought about um another thing would probably be i guess how some laws apply differently depending on who you are Hmm. that is true in our world and then a third thing would be how like where the the law started and who kind of created this whole idea of situation the of the law yeah mm-hmm. yeah i think that would take us outside of america yeah yeah all right what scares you about the law um that the same thing that I loved about it, about it, there being rules Mm -hmm. and this being how you should follow it probably is similar to what I would be scared of about the law is that you have those rules, but then there's people who those rules don't apply to. And that's Mm -hmm. kind of scary. So, yeah. And then there are rules where if you and one other person follow the exact same rules, one person benefit from them more than you would. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's something I don't like about the law either, which is Mm -hmm. what drove me (laughs) to the law to try and change it. So now I try to do that in my own little way. Um, Is there any false ideas or narratives that you had about the law before you recognized that that wasn't really true? I want to say no. Like I never really, like in school, like you have to learn about the laws and stuff like that, but it was never anything that I really looked into in terms of real life until like a lot of injustices started Mm -hmm. happening in the black community and those injustices were being um, streamed and shown to the public eye. Mm -hmm. So I don't think I really, thought about it or had an idea about it until I started seeing the negative effects it had on my community. Hmm. 
that but also is- the positive in terms of like us breaking barriers true getting laws created that would hopefully benefit us in a positive way yeah and you know that's part of that somewhat well i guess it would be an education situation but social and education because you know that something is there to help you but if there's no way for you to actually see it like some people have to physically see something work in the process right to believe that it can work Mm -hmm. um so thank you for sharing that and guys just to let you know the legal rounds brought to you by the sl de bras law firm are you a business owner or entrepreneur with a service or product who desires to build a lasting legacy and impact? Do you desire to increase your bottom line by boosting your business protection? I want you to join me for a two-day free business event this March 1st and 2nd for three methods to creating a legacy by increasing your protection. You can sign up at sldbarros.com forward slash events. And I will also make sure I put the link in the chat for you. Okay, you ready for my last question? Yeah. All right. Something I am passionate about is educating individuals on legacy. You've always wanted to go to the Olympics. Mm -hmm. Um, It's always been a dream of yours to do that. Not only that, though, you've dominated as a Black woman in sports and a Black woman in a sport that's not even popular in this country (laughs) on top of that, which is amazing, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you wish people to remember you when God calls you home and what are some things that you're doing now to make sure that you're you're building and leaving and will leave a lasting legacy I want people to remember me as somebody who worked hard to be financial financially secure not only for herself but for her family I want to be remembered as one of the best rugby players in the world I want to be remembered as somebody who cared about her community and her supporters and showed that through her actions. Um, And I want to be remembered as a black woman who had a positive impact on and off the field. And some ways that I've been doing that is obviously trying to work hard every day to become the best rugby player that I can. I've also done volunteering. I've done rugby camps. I'm actually going to um, a high, not a high school, a rugby organization today to work with some young girls. So trying to find ways to have, um, create personal connections with the people who look up to me. Um, On a daily basis, I try to put a good image out there socially and in person to leave a positive impact and inspiration on people watching. And I work very hard in terms of trying to be the best rugby player in the world so that I can get that highest contract to be able to bring money in, doing things on social media to also be able to bring money in, going out into the community, putting on rugby camps and other events to bring money in, doing whatever I can to um, have complete control over my future and what I leave behind. That's awesome. That is so awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And I know all the things that you are doing, have done, and will do is something that a lot of young women can look up to and guys can look up Mm -hmm. to to recognize that there is a possibility. If there is a will, there is a way, right? Folks always say. Um, But it just it hits a little different when someone from your own community have broken certain barriers Mm -hmm. um, and have really loosened the chains of what society said we should remain in or stick to. So kudos to you. And I'm so glad that you came on to the podcast. Where can people find you on social to connect and also go and get some of this amazing merch because I want this (laughs) sweater that you have on. (laughs) Thank you so much for having me on here. Thank you for allowing me to have a voice and share my experience and also if you are wanting to get some of these great sweatshirts or t-shirts any nigh on fire merch i have a website nighttapper.com i also sell rugby jerseys on there so you can check that out i'm also on all social platforms instagram twitter facebook linkedin TikTok, anything you can think of at nigh tapper All right. Well, thank you so much, Naya. It has been a pleasure to interview you. 
um, and to learn more about your journey and how you got into the sport of rugby. Until next time, guys, it is always my pleasure to bring amazing individuals to you to educate you, support you, and guide you to your next level. I'm Savanya Barros, the protector of athletes, and I will see you later. Ciao. Bye. Thanks for joining us this week on What Are You Sporting About? podcast. Make sure to visit our website, prosportlawyer.com, where you can subscribe to the show in iTunes, Stitcher, or whatever your favorite platform is so you'll never miss a show. And while you're at it, if you found value in the show, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes or iHeartRadio. Or if you'd simply tell a friend about the show, that would help us out too. If you like the show, you might want to check out our book, What Are You Sporting About? Attorney Savania DeBarros is available for private consulting at S ldebarros.com. And remember, we're here to educate, support, and guide you in your journey to success because we're all sporting about something.